Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Five years. That's gone by pretty quickly, hasn't it? And yet, that's how long we have been on the journey, along with AMD, of course, with the Zen platform. It's hard to believe, actually, just how much has changed in those five years when Ryzen first launched in its first iteration well, four cores was normal on mainstream platforms and AMD basically doubled that. And while that is very impressive and awesome, perhaps the most interesting thing that came of the first generation of Zen was competition back in the marketplace. Intel had been dominant for quite some time and while Skylake was very awesome, at least when it first debuted, Haswell and previous architectures such as Sandy Bridge really were just piling on tons of pressure on AMD and well excavator bulldozer they just weren't able to compete especially in areas such as gaming but Zen was basically a complete ground up design and in my personal opinion I think it was perhaps one of the most important perhaps even the most important product that AMD have ever launched since then of course Zen has improved immeasurably including chiplet designs for Zen 2 and also increased core counts, and now Zen 3 is just awesome. However, things are never stagnant, and AMD have just put out a video, I'll link it in the description, discussing what's next. And the first thing that they did discuss, really of interest to me anyway, was Ryzen Vcache. They confirmed my report and others that it will be on the AM4 platform. They did not mention motherboards. I've heard it's only gonna be the 500 series, although this is not official. So if it works with a 300 series board, great. Although I wouldn't be too expectant of it. Either way, it is going to launch in Q1. And Robert Halleck, who was the one that was really discussing this, also doubled down the fact that it's gonna be about a 15% improvement in gaming. Although they haven't really given other measurements for other applications, such as a Blender or, I don't know, Adobe Photoshop or Premiere or whatever. So it'll be interesting to see how that additional cache does benefit those applications. I'm genuinely super excited and curious, especially when you consider the ramifications of that cache or cache-like scenarios across a broader ecosystem. For example, server processors, right? Getting back to the point, however, 15%. And I'm sure most would agree that that is definitely a generational uplift. 15% is kind of the midpoint of what you would expect from one generation to another, classically anyway. 10%, 20%, those are kind of the figures you would expect. When we saw Zen to Zen Plus, it was around, I think around 3% IPC if memory serves, thanks to some improvements in uh, cache timings and some other bits and bobs. So here, AMD basically did the same thing as what they did with Zen 2 to Zen 3, which, if memory serves, is around a 19% improvement. So they're essentially just getting exactly that performance, but just essentially bolting on a whole bunch of cash to it, which I think is pretty awesome. Moving on to the next big thing, though, perhaps the process that everyone's talking about, the architecture anyway, is Zen 4. And here, I'm hearing some really interesting things for IPC for Zen 4. Like, I'm hearing it's going to be very impressive indeed, with some people telling me it's like 25% IPC, although, honestly, I think those might be outliers. I'm personally, at this point, thinking around 20%, but, you know, I'll wait and see, because obviously Zen 4 is not just going to be IPC gains, you've also got clock frequencies and a whole bunch of other stuff. So there is a lot of kind of lofty performance data for Zen 4 that I'm hearing. Again, I'm hearing 25%. Some people have even told me faster. 
but um, I'm personally, just personally, I prefer to be conservative. Uh, regarding though the processor platform, there are a couple of very interesting things. So AM5, it's not been officially named by AMD, but we're pretty damn certain it's called AM5. Um, it will, of course, support DDR5. Now, DDR5 for Older Lake has not perhaps been super well received. In fact, we've seen some early prices for the slower memory kits and they're eye-watering. I don't remember the exact figure offhand. I forgot to note it down, but it was like 350-ish bucks, which is a lot of money. Um, but the good news is for AMD, by the time that this actually launches, which they're saying is going to be later in 2022, and of course the Vcash is going to launch um, early Q1 next year, which is actually a little later than what I heard. I was told by a very good source, let's just say they've been right with a ton of stuff. I obviously can't attribute things to people, but let's just say that they were right on a ton of things previously. They told me that AMD were aiming for Q4 this year, so perhaps their information was wrong or things slipped a little bit. Either way, doesn't matter. Q1. Uh, so Yeah, so Q1. Uh, Robert also did not provide a release date for Zen 4, as I said a moment ago. I personally think it's going to be Q3 late or early-ish Q4, but again, things can slip and I'll just wait and see on that one. But yeah, so DDR5 by that point should have matured, prices should come down because obviously new memory standards typically are more expensive anyway. So it'll be fascinating to see exactly how all of that plays out. But the real surprise was PCIe Gen 5 has been verbally confirmed by Robert at least for the platform. Now that is a very important distinction because yeah, the rumor has been that, well, Raphael does not support it. So that's Zen 4 Ryzen to be clear, that it is only PCIe Gen 4. And I've personally heard a ton of different conflicting things here. Most recently, if you've been watching the channel, you'll know that I've been saying it's definitely Gen 4. Um, but however, earlier when I was First, kind of telling a lot of rumors about Zen 4, I was told that it actually was PCIe Gen 5. But yeah, later on I was told that no, that's probably only going to be for servers and desktop is almost certainly only Gen 4. With Intel apparently having Gen 5 for Older Lake, which is again, basically confirmed at this point, and AMD basically playing catch up. And the reason I was given is that it doesn't really make sense necessarily on a mainstream platform, but it does seem, at least with the wording that Robert has given here, that they do want the latest standards on AM5. And I guess from a PR perspective, if nothing else, there are some other reasons too that you can argue, such as the number of lanes that perhaps you want to attribute to certain devices, especially in like kind of mobile kind of platforms, but that is kind of outside the topic of this video. But it will be interesting to see how all of this plays out now, some people are saying that that doesn't necessarily mean Raphael will have it. However, with the wording here, I'm going to probably say that AMD are stating that the Ryzen, you know, Zen 4 uh, products, that would be Raphael, will support PCIe Gen uh, 5. The reason I say that is because if they didn't, people will play back this, you know, segment to AMD ad nauseum and say, look, you said it does support it, What's the use in the platform supporting it if the processors don't? So that's just a guess on my part. And it will be very curious because by the time these processors launch, in roughly the same time frame, give or take a few months, we'll also see a Raptor Lake launch. Now, Raptor Lake really, I'm hearing, is not super, super exciting. Um, it's basically kind of the refresh of Alder Lake to really simplify things here. Meteor Lake is the architecture that everyone is super excited for that I know that kind of know anything about Intel. Everyone's like, yeah, Meteor Lake is is profound. It 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 really is a, an amazing architecture from what I'm hearing. Raptor Lake is kind of being described to me as it's okay, but it's not anything completely and utterly new. I'm hearing IPC wise that uh, Raptor Lake is going to be about 15% best case scenario. In fact, I was told it's actually optimistic for that. On average, it's probably around 9-10%. But of course, what is the average workload? It's, it's, always, it's always very difficult to ascertain that because 
to some people a CPU Z run is like you know the de facto to others they'll use something you know like a larger suite of applications so again these are kind of figures that early on they're quite difficult to really ascertain but I'll be very interested to see what AMD brings to the table here with Zen 4 given again they will be facing a slightly enhanced version of Alder Lake. I'm also hearing that there is going to be a core increase as well for um, for Raptor Lake 8 slash 16 although one person is telling me that it's not. Personally I'm leaning towards a higher core count but we'll wait and see. Also, a very interesting thing that Robert just touched on, and when I say touched, I mean super duper 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 briefly, was kind of machine learning elements within the CPU. Well, that's not technically the correct words. The correct word would be some type of accelerator. And this seems to be a little bit like Apple are doing um, with their neural engines. Now, the applications for this quite honestly are extremely broad one of the things that robert gave an example for would be to say reduce the background noise for say if you're in a conference call right now yes you can do that with your gpu so if you have an nvidia gpu for example you can use nvidia broadcast and certainly there are crap tons as a technical term of other applications which do this i think discord does it skype does it and so on and so on and so on and they do a pretty good job actually just in on average so those are just some examples of what we could see in the future however this does have a lot of different implications for the type of designs that amd could create in the future especially again given the fact that amd can basically bolt different uh, well different ip blocks together to create pretty much anything they want um, I have actually, I think, possibly discussed this previously on the channel regarding the uh, the uh, accelerators on the CPU. I honestly don't remember. But, um, yeah, I'm going to do a little bit more digging about this and try to find out more information. It's going to be fascinating, I think, to see what AMD are planning in the future. And, yeah, I mean, my personal opinion is that AMD and Intel are going to be definitely in a bit of a slapping match over the next couple of years. Like, Zen is going to be sticking around. I mean, Robert said it himself until, like, 2024 onwards. So, you know, it's not like AMD are just going to be sitting there as Intel are pushing forward. With that said, I do think Intel are going to be offering some really great products. And again, I know I sound like a broken record, but competition is only going to benefit us as the people who are plonking down cash you know competition is where things start to progress and i want intel to compete because i want intel to compete because that just means that amd makes better products and vice versa and this is another reason and i've said this a billion times now but i do want intel to get into the gpu market and speaking of Intel in the GPU market, it is worth noting that there's a fascinating couple of comments actually from Raj Akhodori. Now, I'm sure most of you are aware that when um, Intel Arc releases, it's going to be an interesting one because Raj Akhodori himself said that we'll be coming in as a third player. I'll always be very cautious when the demand is so high and when the market is so hard. I can always use more supply, so I'm not going to say I have enough supply with this high demand market. I think any one of my competitors would say the same thing. But Roger Chandler has stated, um, and again, of course, he is an Intel uh, employee, that they are not going to be implementing software lockouts or anything like that. So they're not specifically going to try to avoid mining. Um, it's basically a product that will be on the market and then they will allow people to use the product however people want to, well, use it. To be honest, from a business perspective, I almost don't blame Intel for not putting LHR in because at the end of the day, they are a new player, so they're going to want to sell as many of these GPUs as possible. And LHR for NVIDIA has been met with kind of an interesting reception. Not only from a PR perspective, it's kind of difficult to manage, the reality is that it's also been bypassed in several different ways, which I won't go into in this video. Quite honestly, it's going to be interesting to see how the market takes this. Now, the, the, the bottom line is, for the performance perspective, 
these GPUs are not super quick. They are not going to be able to, say, defeat um, an RTX 4090. They're just not. They are not designed to take on something along the lines of Lovelace. Personally, I've been hearing that the performance is around an RTX 3070, um, but to my knowledge anyway, it's going to be a battle mage which is designed, which is obviously the uh, architecture directly after Alchemist. It is the one that is designed to compete with both RDNA 3 as well as Lovelace. I'm going to be very interested to see how all of that just plays out in the market, to be honest. It'll be definitely a curious one. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, well, it's YouTube, so you know what to do. Leave a like on the video and subscribe if you are not already a um, subscriber. That was a terrible sentence, but whatever. We're going to roll with it. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.